everyone. So welcome to Allen Digital Classes. So I'm your zoology lecturer. So let us today start about one of the interesting topic under human physiology, and that topic is excretory products and their elimination. So excretory product and elimination is one of the interesting and important chapter for your the NEET exam. So let us discuss about this concept in detail. Now, what exactly the meaning of the term excretion? So before going to the term excre excretion, we need to know certain things. That is, so animals mainly accumulate certain waste materials like ammonia, urea, uric acid, and carbon dioxide. Yes, even the carbon dioxide is also considered as metabolic waste material along with the water and certain ions which includes sodium potassium chloride phosphate sulfate so these uh, ions in excess if it is present in the body fluids it is considered as waste material and these metabolic waste material are mainly produced or these uh, waste materials are mainly produced because of the metabolic activities or by excess ingestion or by excess ingestion or by because of the excess metabolic activity so these waste materials accumulates in our body so in that the various nitrogen waste materials are, are mainly produced and those waste materials are ammonia urea as well as uric acid ammonia urea and uric acid these three waste material are considered as the the major nitrogenous waste excreted by the the animals so the process of removal of these waste material from the body is known as excretion so in excretory products and elimination chapter we need to discuss more about this concept that is excretion so it is a process which is concerned with removal of these nitrogenous waste materials from the body is known as excretion and in order to maintain our internal environment constant internal environment constant is nothing but maintaining the temperature so maintaining the water as well as the the electrolytes balance so in order to maintain that so these systems mainly helpful so excretory system is one of them which maintains our internal environment constant and that process it is known as homeostasis and this homeostasis term was proposed by Walter Cannon. So homeostasis term was proposed by Walter Cannon. So what exactly the homeostasis means? It is maintaining the internal environment constant. It may be temperature or the pH that is acidity level and the water level in our the body which changes according to the the need so that environment if we keep constant so that term or that process we call it as the homeostasis and the term was proposed by Walter Cannon and so in our body as we discussed many nitrogenous waste and other waste materials are produced and majorly they are nitrogenous waste carbon dioxide ions as well as the the water and three examples we discussed under the nitrogenous waste and those are ammonia then urea and the uric acid and examples for the ions are sodium potassium chloride phosphate as well as the the sulfate so these are the examples for the different the waste materials that are generated in our the body and the process of removal of these nitrogenous waste material is known as excretion now so based on the the type of the the waste material that is excreted by the animal so there are three different types of animals we can observe one is amniotelic and the second one it is ureotelic and the third one it is uricotelic based on the the type of nitrogen waste material that is excreted by the animals so there are three types let us discuss one by one the first one is amniotelic in this amniotelic the excretory matter which is uh, removed by the animal is ammonia and in order to remove ammonia from the body no so we require 
lot of water so animals require more water to remove that ammonia and if we see the toxicity level also so the toxicity level it is highest as i mentioned the requirement of the water to remove ammonia it is very large so what are the examples for amniotelic animals examples for amniotelic animals are aquatic insects bony fishes aquatic amphibians and in that it is tadpole larva which is formed during the life cycle of the frog so now if you see these animals like insects bony fishes and the amphibians in them the common thing is all of these animals are found in aquatic habitat so do you know the reason yes the reason is so in order to remove ammonia very large quantity of water is required for terrestrial animals it becomes very challenge to remove that ammonia because we need to drink a lot of water so but for aquatic creatures that is not the problem because surrounding lot of water will be there so that water it utilizes to remove ammonia so animals which excrete ammonia as a waste material such animals we call it as amniotelic so the next uh, the type of animal is ureotelic animal in ureotelic as the name indicate ureotelic means in these animals so the excretory matter which is released is urea and toxicity level if we observe it is less toxic compared to ammonia ammonia toxicity level it is very high compared to the ammonia so urea it is less toxic and requirement of water to remove this waste material it is less compared to ammonia so compared to ammonia toxicity is also less and the requirement of water is also less so then what are the examples for ureotelic animals so for ureotelic animals examples are marine fishes terrestrial amphibians that is the frog and the mammals so for mammals and for terrestrial amphibians and marine fishes it is easy to remove urea from their body because the requirement of the water it is less than the ammonia and next come the third type of the animal that is uricotelic in uricotelic animals the type of the waste material that is excreted is uric acid and how about the toxicity level yes the toxicity level it is very least so ammonia is highest urea it is the medium and the least toxicity level is there for uric acid and the amount of the water it is required is also very less so very least amount of water is required to remove uric acid so what are the examples for uricotelic animals examples for uricotelic animals includes insects land snails many reptiles and birds so many reptiles and even birds in them we can find so the removal of the nitrogen waste material that is in the form of uric acid so there are total the three types of animals we can find and they are amniotelic ureo as well as uricotelic so if we compare this chart so we'll know that ammonia is most toxic it's highly toxic and the least toxic one is the the uricotelic animal and the requirement of the water to remove ammonia is highest and very least is there for uricotelic and all these examples for the different types are very important for your the neat curriculum so for the neat exam these examples you people have to practice the next concept is we need to discuss about mechanism of excretion means so in these animals how these animals remove those waste material so let us discuss one by one starting with the amniotelic followed by ureotelic and then the uricotelic first let us discuss about amniotelic so in amniotelic almost all the aquatic creatures so removes ammonia as the the waste material how exactly it removes is for example if we take the fishes in them so ammonia is mainly released in the form of ammonium ions through a process known as simple diffusion so by diffusion across body surface or through gill surface so fishes remove ammonia as the ammonium ions this is the mechanism that is followed by amniotelic animals okay and second comes the ureotelic animals 
especially in urotelic animals the metabolic waste material mainly generated in the cell and because of the metabolic activity the ammonia are mainly released and these ammonia when it is produced in the cell that ammonium ion it is mainly released into the blood system and the blood carries that ammonia to the organ that is yes that is the liver so within the liver what happens to that ammonia within the liver ammonia combines with carbon dioxide to form less toxic urea yes within liver ammonia combines with one more waste material that is carbon dioxide to form urea and that cycle it is known as ornithine cycle so the process of formation of urea takes place in liver through the cycle known as ornithine cycle and then the formed urea in the liver it is mainly transported to the excretory system that is to the kidney where the urea it is removed in the form of the urine okay this is the mechanism that is absorbed in ureotelic so in ureotelic uh, animals ammonia it is produced as a metabolic waste material that is converted into urea within the liver and kidneys are the excretory structure which removes that ammonia uh, which removes that urea from the body next comes the mechanism that is for uricotelic animals so in uricotelic animals uric acid is the least toxic one and that least toxic uric acid it is removed by less amount of the the water by these animals like reptiles and the birds in case of the birds if we see so the uric acid it is released in the form of the pellet in the form of the paste or pellet so the uric acid is mainly released so in order to remove that uric acid least amount of water it is required so these are the mechanisms which is followed by these animals amniotelic ureo as well as the uricotelic next come the topic that is excretory organs so there are different excretory organs that is absorbed in animals and those are protonephridia nephridia malpighian tubules kidney as well as the the green glands or the antennal glands so these are the various different types of excretory structures that are found in animals so let us discuss what are these excretory structure and in which animals we can absorb them if we start with the protonephridia so protonephridia are the primitive form of the excretory structures that are found in flat forms where the body of these animals are flat example the planaria and in some rotifers and even some cephalocordates in amphioxus we can find the protonephridia or the flame cell as the excretory structure and the next come the nephridia so nephridia are act as excretory structure in some annelids like yes that is earthworm and malpighian tubules the third one is malpighian tubules and these malpighian tubules are the the excretory structures in certain arthropods like insects you can see the grasshopper and even in cockroach and all we can find the malpighian tubule as the excretory structures and next comes green glands or antennal glands in aquatic arthropods so arthropods majorly found in terrestrial habitat in some aquatic arthropods like crustaceans example prawn in them we can find the excretory structure as green glands or antennal glands and the last one that is the kidney so in advanced uh, the organisms so in the high level organisms in vertebrates we can find kidney as the excretory organs so different animals depending upon their level of organization and the type of habitat where they find so the excretory organs changes so these are the five different types of excretory organs so the concept that we have covered so far are so we have discussed about the the different types of the the waste material and the types of the animals based on which type of the waste material that is eliminated and then we have discussed about excretory organs now let us solve certain questions related to the today's topic the first one is homeostasis term was proposed by 
homeostasis system was proposed by Claude Bernard? No. So the answer it is Walter Cannon. So Walter Cannon proposed the term homeostasis and it is important one. And the next question is excretion in the form of uric acid and ureates in birds. Excretion in the form of uric acid and ureates in birds is helpful in so especially as I mentioned for terrestrial animals. So water is the major challenge. If it is an ammonia means so most of the animals has to drink a lot of water to remove that ammonia. So but for terrestrial animals so the loss of water it is more. So that's why in order to conserve the water. So most of the animals like the reptiles and the birds excrete uric acid in order to Yes, in order to conserve the body water. So, in order to conserve the body water, they mainly excrete uric acid as the waste material. So, there are three types of animals we can observe in nature and those are amniotelic, ureotelic as well as the uricotelic animals and the different excretory organs are found in different animals. For example, Malpighian tubules are the excretory structure in case of insects and in crustacean though it is an arthropod because of the change in the habitat we can find a different excretory organs. So these are the concepts that we have covered so far. Okay, thank you all.